before we can actually look at some tunes, we need to understand certain basics. For proper combustion, we need four components, which are air, fuel, ignition and timing. Why do we need air? First of all, the combustion process itself can be seen as a fire. Too much air will put the fire out. Too little won't let the fire start. So we need the right amount of air. This is why you should make sure that your filters aren't clogged and your intake hoses are all sealed. On top of that, I would also recommend to check your mass airflow sensor because this tells the ECU how much air is in the system. Next, we have fuel. We need the right amount of fuel. We don't want to run too rich nor too lean. Running too rich means that we inject too much fuel into the process. Why is that bad? Well, by injecting too much fuel, we risk to wash off the oil from the cylinder walls and therefore destroy the lubrication, which increases friction and material wear. If we run too lean, we're going to increase the temperatures in the combustion chamber, which can lead to knocking. Then we have ignition. We want to ignite the air-fuel mixture at the right time. On top of that, we have timing. And why timing matters, we're going to look at this at the next slide. Our engines are so-called four-stroke engines. The first one is the intake stroke. This is when we suck in the air and fuel mixture. Then we have a compression stroke, which basically means that we move the piston back up again and compress what has been, you know, sucked into the cylinder. And then we have a power stroke. We ignite the mixture, which forces our piston to go back down. And this is followed by the exhaust stroke. This is when the exhaust valves open and let the used up mixture escape. We can see this in this graphic. So this is intake. Now we're going to compress it, ignite it, piston moves back down, and now we move into the exhaust stroke. Exhaust first open, and we let it exit again. As mentioned in my previous video, there's a condition called knocking, which can be heard as a ping sound. Knocking means that there's an uncontrolled combustion. The spark still ignites the mixture, but a second spontaneous ignition occurs. If you look on the picture on the right, you can see it. We have this like um, green circle, which is the spark plug. And then if you look at the cylinder wall to the very right, you're going to see this blue circle. This is where the spontaneous ignition occurs. This is sort of how a diesel engine works, but this is completely unwanted in auto engines. And the reason for that is because due to this second spontaneous ignition, we will have pressure peaks which can cause severe engine damage. But what causes knocking? Most of the time, or let's say a very common problem with not well done tunes, is that the air fuel ratio itself is too lean. The table down below will show you certain conditions and the air fuel ratio. An air fuel ratio of 9 to 1 means we have 9 components of air and 1 component of fuel. As an example, during deceleration, we have 17 components of air and one component of fuel, which is really lean. While during startup, 9 to 1, it's pretty rich. And of course, during load, we need to increase the amount of fuel to keep our temperatures low in the cylinder. Another reason, which we spoke about previously, was the fuel. And it really depends what fuel you drive. Normal petrol, which we don't really have in Europe, at least in Germany, it has an octane rating of 91. And this octane rating, it basically describes how knock resistant the fuel is. The higher the rating, the more knock resistant the fuel is going to be. And the more knock resistant the fuel is going to be, the more power you can get out of it. Another problem is too aggressive ignition timing. If ignite too early, this will cause knocking. If we ignite too late, 
So when the piston is beyond top dead center, you know, beyond its highest position, we will lose power or might even overheat. And of course, we will lose efficiency. Other causes can be too high temperatures in the cylinder caused by a too lean mixture or by a too high intake air temperature. On the right, you're going to see the cooler layout of a 9.5. We have the condensator in front of the intercooler and then the radiator. So basically the intercooler, which is responsible to cool our intake air, is sandwiched between those two. This is why the 9.5 often runs into problems during summer. Another mechanical cause we are not going to experience is too high compression. As an example, a diesel engine has a compression ratio of 15 to 1 up to 23 to 1, while for a petrol engine, 8 to 1 up to 13.5 to 1 is like the most commonly used ratio. Now we're going to look at this little movie by NGK. So this is a regular combustion. So piston goes down. Now the exhaust valve should open next. There you can see it. It opens now. So we extract the gases. We already know our fourth stroke. Now the intake stroke. Piston moves back down again. On the next stroke, we're going to compress it. And now we ignite it. And this causes the piston to move back down. This is how it's supposed to be. Now the knocking. This is the compression stroke. Now we want to ignite, which we do. And now you can see on the right, as previously shown in my picture, that we have a second spontaneous ignition, which we don't really want. So let's take a look at this once more. Now the compression stroke. Around now we want to ignite it. And on the right again, you will see the knocking. And now we have pre-ignition, which is even worse. This is when not the spark plug ignites the mixture, but it just happens spontaneously. And this happens when you choose a too hot spark plug as an example. This is where NGK recommends to use the right heat range. So let's talk about that. NGK states, a good rule of thumb is one heat range cold of every 75 to 100 HP added. Now, most of you recommend to run the BCPR 7ES, which is basically a colder plug than the one used you know, normally in the engine. And we can see what NGK says about that as well. By making spark plug heat range changes, it is better to err on the side of too colder plug. Running too cold a plug can only cause it to full out, whereas running too hot a plug can cause severe engine damage. So why am I still against the BCPR 7ES? Obviously the heat range isn't the problem. The problem however is, is that the entire ignition system has been calibrated for a certain set of plugs. And this is what you should stick to. Don't just put anything in it. Put in what was supposed to go in. Because in this vehicle in particular, it is very important that this calibration remains untouched. Because the entire knock detection depends on choosing the right plug and running a proper set of coils. So if you put in a BCPR 7 yes, it can be that the knock detection of the coils has been fooled. You can't trust the data anymore afterwards. Personally, I have tried the BCPR 7 yes, and I can confirm that it does work indeed. However, again, we don't know how this type of spark plug will affect the knock and misfire detection. So I would not just recommend just put them in. I would also not recommend to just, you know, get them to 0.8 millimeters or whatever. Don't. Therefore, pick the right spark plug. It does matter. Now I want to talk about some tuning companies. First of all, Hirsch Performance, I think it goes without saying. 
They have been the factory tuner for so many years, and there's a good reason why. Their tunes might not be the craziest ones in terms of performance, but they are very, very, very reliable. And this is also something which not everyone can achieve. If you want more performance, I really do recommend that you check out MapTune. The tunes are very well done. The only thing that I would say you need to be a bit careful is when you have a car with high mileage. Because your clutch is most likely a bit worn out and it might happen that due to the increased torque provided by MapTune, the clutch will start to slip. It's not that the tuning is bad, but it's just something you need to consider when your car is a bit older. Now some good tuners. Regarding the mon tuning, I personally tried the Safe Zero for the B207R and I must say I was impressed. It was really really well done. The car drove nice, the knock counter was fine, the tuning itself, it is maybe a bit too harsh on the turbocharger, I must say that. But then again, if you have a car with low mileage, or let's say you replaced the turbocharger recently, or it's in good shape at very least, it won't be a problem. Noob tune, I didn't try him. However, I have a friend who tried it, and he also checked the knock count and everything. Perfectly fine. Regarding Dian, I was a bit split, therefore not, I should put him on this list. Not that the tunes don't perform, or that the work he does is bad in particular, but it simply is that he is always working. And it's very hard to reach him. So if you need help, if you need advice, of course he's gonna help you, but it's just going to take its time. Sometimes he might respond within 10 minutes, then again he will need a day or even two. That's, that's simply not consistent. And in my opinion, a good tuning should always have a very good after sales service. On my decent list, I got BSR. I don't want to say anything bad about BSR, please don't get me wrong. But I see that BSR is more a Volvo tuner than a Zap tuner. And you can notice that during some of the tunes, they're a bit rough on the edges, to say it this way. So it's not bad that your engine is going to explode or that you will have problems, but compared to the other tunes, something simply is missing here. As Nanable mentioned, they have Makanized, which is the company of Makan, who goes by the real name of Marco Södergren. And what some people don't know is that Marco Södergren and Matthias Klaasson have developed the Tronic suits and the Tronic can flasher. The reason why I didn't put him in the previous slides is simply because I'm a reseller of his tunes. And since I would like to make this presentation as objective as I possibly can, I'm not going to give a rating on something I sell. Not because I don't trust the product, but simply because I want people to have a chance to really understand and learn something without feeling this guy is trying to sell me something. In my opinion, you should always feel free to question whatever somebody is telling you. Feel free to debate and to discuss. And this is going to bring us to the red flags. When I hear a Facebook tuner say as an example, you don't need to check the knock counter. I mean, we saw previously how knocking happens and why it's so important to check it. So why not check the knock counter? Another quote I really like, what about multiplicative fuel trims? 10% off is nothing. This was said by a very famous Swedish tuning company. It's a company we all know about, a company which boasts with the high performance cars, which will even race in and stuff like that. But I can only tell you as much, the tunes are horrible. Seriously. Some of the tunes are so bad that even people with minor understanding in what we are basically discussing here, forget that something is completely off. And when people tell me my car doesn't even start in winter anymore since I got it tuned by company XYZ, well, is it the car's fault or is it maybe the tune, especially when it starts on the stock tune? 
it's it's undescribable. But as said, we will take a look at that later. I have a bunch of her files and I would really, really like to show you how a good tune looks like and how a bad one looks like. Another thing which I completely can't understand is to mess with security functions. Of course, sometimes you need to move certain limiters, as an example with fuel cut. But for a stage one, it will be rarely, if not, not needed at all, to adjust any type of limiter. You know this the saying, work with the limiters, not against them. Another thing I completely can't stand and not understand are tuners who do not respect any log files. The car gives us the numbers we need to work with. I cannot deny the data recorded by the sensors. If a car registers knocking for an example, I'm, I can't say it's not there. Obviously it's being registered. If, as an example, I, I register two bars of boost, which is insane for a stock turbo, I can't just say, no, it's not. Why is it recorded then? This is why I always endorse people to make logs. The biggest red flag, however, are tuners or tuning companies especially, especially the Swedish one I previously mentioned, who talk down others, who trash talk them, who deny the facts, who are like, you have nothing to say because I'm the tuner and you're not. I know sometimes I can also come over like that, especially when we talk about spark plugs as an example and I write, oh guys, why do you want to use that? I really apologize if that's the case because I don't want to be like that. And this is also the thing, it can happen sometimes, you know, we, we are just human. We can have a bad day. We can also be wrong sometimes, even I can be wrong. I make mistakes as well. But it's always important to remember we started small. And therefore, we should always be open to debate about stuff, talk about stuff. You know, this is really what tuning is about, discussing. Because the tuning process, it doesn't simply stop because you entered the numbers and make the power figures you desired. You are always learning and advancing. And therefore, the proper way should be that you as a customer are encouraged to check the knock and misfire counter. Or at least, you know, you should have the ability to do so. This is why I really, really dislike when people mail in the ECU. I don't want jobs like that. Seriously, guys. If you have a tech tool, okay. But if you don't, and you have no way to check the data, I will tell you a story now. So once I once had this customer, who would go from a B207L to a B207R. So he was basically replacing injectors and the turbocharger. But before we flashed the new tune, I asked him, do you mind if we check the knock counter? Because he was running a map tune tune. And there were so many knocks, so many knocks all around. I was like, something is off here. Yeah, yeah, whatever. He, di he didn't want to listen. He was like, you know, I, I don't care. If the car breaks, it's fine. And I was like, you should really check. And four weeks later, same customer tries to call me. He didn't reach me, but you know, he sent me a WhatsApp. I got stranded. My fuel pump has failed. Now, some of you might ask yourself, what's the relation between the knock counter and the fuel pump? Like, why was the knock counter increased? And the answer to that is simple, because we needed more fuel. But if already a little bit is missing, a tiny little bit, we will have more knocking. This is really how sensitive it is. If one liter or two liters or three liters are missing because the pump is worn out, it is a big difference. And basically the knock counter told us that your fuel pump is going bad. So therefore it is extremely important to look at these values on a regular basis. In the end, these vehicles are old. It is normal if something is broken. It is normal that not everything is going to be like out of a factory. And therefore it is, in my opinion, very, very, very important that wherever you buy your tune from, when you have a problem, that they take you serious. And more importantly, as previously mentioned, let the data speak. Let the sensors tell their story. Because the log files are definitely going to show what can be off. <laughs>